One common sort of application that lends itself very well to substitution is problems having to do with rate of travel and distance traveled. We call these rate distance problems. Typically in problems like this, we have two moving objects. These problems include the classic algebra word problem. One train leaves city A traveling at 60 miles per hour, and at the same time, another train leaves city B traveling at 50 miles per hour. If the cities are 330 miles apart, where and when do the trains meet? In understanding a problem like this, a picture is very helpful. So here's city A, and here's city B. The distance between them is 330 miles. The train leaves city A, traveling at 60 miles per hour, and leaves city B, traveling at 50 miles per hour. Eventually, sometime later, somewhere in between the two cities, the trains will meet. Let's let our variables be t, the time it takes, in hours, and d, the distance from city A that they meet. So this distance will be d. Then this distance, it won't be the same distance. It'll be the rest of the 330 miles. This distance will be 330 minus d. Our key insight here is that distance equals rate times time. For the train from city A, we'll have d, the distance that train travels, equals its rate, 60, times the time required. For the train from city B, we'll have the distance that that train travels equals its rate times its time. We know that they travel for the same amount of time because the problem tells us they leave at the same time. In other problems, they might travel for different amounts of time because different amounts of time might be given. These problems tend to give us a system that is well set up for substitution. What do I mean by well set up for substitution? I mean, Typically, at least one of our equations is already written in the form d equals something with a t in it. So what do we do? Well, here's our system. This first equation already has d written in terms of t. So in the second equation, right, we have 330 minus d is 50t. We're going to take the d out and replace it by the 60t that is equal to d. And now we have one equation in one variable. What should we do? Well, we need to get all of the t's onto one side. I think it'll be easier if we add 60t to both sides. And then we'll divide both sides by 110 and we get that t is 3. Now we plug that in to the first equation is going to be easier. d is 60 times the 3 we just found. And we get d is 180. Okay. Let's go back to what we've said about the variables in order to answer our question. t is the time that it takes 
and D is the distance from city A that they meet. Our answer then is that they meet after three hours, 180 miles from city A. Important things to remember when approaching one of these problems. A picture is almost always helpful in keeping track of where we are. The other thing to keep in mind is when we're deciding what our variables are, be sure to decide which rate, distance, or time each variable will represent. For example, in this problem, we decided that D would represent specifically the distance that the first train traveled from city A. Notice that the second train then traveled a different distance that we nonetheless expressed in terms of D. Sometimes the times will be different. Sometimes the rates will be one of the variables and they will be different. So it's very useful at the beginning of the problem to write down exactly, not generally, what each variable represents.